It is said that Morgoth created the dragons during the early years of Middle-earth. They are huge and powerful creatures, covered in scales and equipped with high intelligence. Some could breathe fire and others had wings, but all were obsessed with gold. Today, we are chronicling every notable dragon in Middle-earth's history. Welcome to Middle-earth Express, where we explore Tolkien's legendarium in short, digestible videos. Come aboard and join us for more Lord of the Rings content. Known as the Father of Dragons and the Great Worm, Glaurung was the first dragon in Middle-earth. He emerged from the Black Pits of Angband to aid Morgoth in his war against the early elves of Middle-earth, the Noldor. While he couldn't fly, he dealt incredible damage to their forces through his fiery breath. As he wasn't fully grown, Glaurung was driven back to Angband where he waited and matured for two centuries. At full strength, he led the orcs to break the Noldor's siege of Angband. He was also able to hypnotize his foes, using this power on the armies of elves and men during the battles of Beleriand, implying this dragon possessed magical abilities. Later, he sacked the elven underground fortress of Nargothrond and hoarded a massive treasure pile there for many years. A hero of the First Age named Turin made it his mission to kill Glaurung. After the dragon had deceived him and defeated his army at Nargothrond, Turin took his celestial sword, Girthang, made from a fallen meteorite, and hid in a crevasse deep in the forest of Brethil. As the dragon attacked the forest, Turin snuck out of the hole and stabbed the blade into his belly. Glaurung let out a horrifying scream and collapsed on the forest floor. Morgoth attacked the hidden elven city of Gondolin during the War of Jewels in the First Age with the aid of a dragon. One of the city's elven lords named Maeglin betrayed his people and revealed their location to the enemy. A massive fire-breathing dragon, typically referred to as the Fire Drake of Gondolin, flew into the battle carrying balrogs on his back. During the battle, this dragon caused a massive amount of casualties and havoc helping bring about the fall of Gondolin. Towards the end of the War of Wrath, when Morgoth's forces were nearly defeated, the Valar pushed forward to finish the fight. But Morgoth had one final play. He released the winged dragons he had been breeding in Angband. Flying among them was Ankelagon the Black, the largest dragon Middle-earth had ever seen. This final play granted Morgoth a minor win, driving the Valar back for a time, but it wasn't enough and in a fascinating manoeuvre, the Valar sent a man named Erendil to finish off Ankelagon. This story will be covered next week, and you won't want to miss it. It is said his massive body cracked the mountains which it fell upon. After the flooding of Beleriand, the remaining dragons fled far to the north of Middle-earth to a land called Forad Waith. They settled in a valley called the Withered Heath and eventually multiplied, warring and stealing from the dwarves nearby. In the Third Age, a dragon named Scaetha roamed the Grey Mountains near Aeotheod. This land is where the founder of Rohan, Aeor the Young, would eventually be born. Scaetha robbed dwarf and man alike, causing havoc until a lord of the area named Fram stepped up and faced him. In the aftermath of Scaetha's death, the Horn of Rohan was found in the treasure pile, which would eventually be given to Merry by Eowyn. After the return of Sauron, the dragons in the Withered Heath became more active. A great cold drake, which was a dragon that could not breathe fire, killed a dwarf king and his son. It is also said that four of the seven rings of power given to the dwarves were eaten by dragons during this time. The last great dragon of the Third Age was Smaug. He is the familiar beast from The Hobbit who attacked the dwarves of Erebor and eventually took their mountain and hoarded their treasure. Possessing an impressive intelligence and incredible strength and size, Smaug was a foe to be reckoned with. Gandalf took a keen interest in restoring the Dwarven Kingdom because he feared Sauron would earn the allegiance of this dragon and use him in his war on Middle-earth. As you know, Bilbo and the Dwarves joined Gandalf in his quest to slay Smaug and return Erebor back to the Dwarves. After the success of Gandalf's quest in Erebor and the destruction of Sauron in the War of the Ring, stories of dragons in Middle-earth went quiet and many believed they may have gone extinct. 
but there are murmurs that lesser dragons still exist in the far north and could return one day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to come aboard the Middle Earth Express and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.